our presentation today is uh, on their follow environment of uh, Salma burial boats. But uh, I would start with a photo of the present day look of the Salma boat burial area. They are close to the river, but uh, it used to be a street once. And the first boat is uh, at the distance of 200 meters from the river and the other boat uh, 150 meters uh, from the river, north of the river. And we know that uh, the ground has uh, been elevated in Estonia. The sea level has been higher before archaeologists are interested in uh, the fact uh, how high the water level was and how close their um, coast line was. The Salme Strait itself gave the possibility for their seamen from Gotland or Sweden to sail in a faster speed round uh, Sarema. It was um, a big benefit for the seagoers. Here you see a couple of photos about their area immediately before excavations. As to Salma 1, there was a very um, good coincidence that two days before a photo was taken of the road construction and thanks to that road construction, their Salma was uh, discovered. But in general, their landscape is quite even there. And in the second photo, the Salme 2 area, around one year before excavation, if we take the photo of Salme and also Valsierv, area, burial area in Sweden, and um, Neil showed these photos to you before. There was an elevation, and the burial sites were a bit different from uh, Salme one. Actually, the elevations are characteristic of uh, boat burials or ship burials. We don't see a picture like that in Salme, but um, the picture we saw immediately before excavations started, actually, it was not the landscape during their burial ceremonies themselves. And uh, before excavations, uh, only 50 centimeters from the bottom of their boat was seen. And in Salma II, their upper part of the boat uh, has been um, gone. And here, the photo actually gives you the idea of the cross section and different layers of the boat and the undisturbed gravel. And you see the layers like uh, in this photo. When we started to excavate the boat, one question arose. How the boat appeared to be there? Was it 
dug into or uh, the the boat was deserted uh, on the seashore and here we don't see a clear sign between the boat and the undisturbed gravel. In case of a more deep uh, ditch or trench, there should be a kind of filling layer. But um, maybe the reason was that it was such a small part of the boat uh, bottom Anyway, after excavations, we had a lot of questions, and it was clear that we as archaeologists, we can't find the answers. We had to cooperate with geologists. And the first data, mm, together with the geologists, we published in 2009, but they were not based on their on-site geological studies, but their existing data was considered. And now, thanks to the Viking Phenomen project, it was possible for us to carry out more serious geological studies, and we uh, were able to make landscape reconstructions. And in uh, 2018, Estonia changed its uh, latitude systems. Um, now we have, Amst have Amsterdam zero, but before we had uh, Kronstein, uh, Kronstadt zero level as their Etalon. According to the new system, the level of the Salme bottom is 4.1 meters above the sea level, but according to the old system, it was 1.8 meters. And now I would like to give the floor to Alan Rosenthal. He will speak about the geological studies. And these studies were also published last year. Thank you. I'm Alar Rosento uh, from the Tartu University. It was um, a great pleasure for me to carry out some excavation work in Salva, and um, we tried to reconstruct their ancient uh, environmental situation and really uh, an article was uh, published in their journal the Holocene this year and I would like to show you some of these results uh, later on, if you have a question, so please ask in English or, or in Estonian, both. And so what were the study questions in uh, Salme? One thing we studied was the formation of the landscape. We uh, had drills and corings and we used radar studies to understand where the boats were buried, or one hypothesis was that their boats were left on the seashore. The other important focus, like uh, um, Mark mentioned it, uh, the Salma Strait. Nowadays, it's a river area we um, carried out geological studies of this area and you see the wide uh, uh, western part and relatively um, narrow eastern part and here we also had some 
cross-sections, geological cross-sections, and uh, we had corings. They're indicators of sea level, uh, maritime information and geological information in order to reconstruct the uh, hello scene and uh, changes in the environment. In the nearest uh, area, Virtsu uh, has uh, studied their sea level data for 100 years. But uh, with our studies, we had the possibility of uh, covering also the bronze period 3,000 years ago. Now let's continue with our materials. This is their gear radar profiles of their areas near Salme boats. They are on the western eastern axis. And uh, we see their in inner structure of uh, mm, uh, silt and sediment. Uh, uh, with the radio carbon analysis and uh, luminescence uh, uh, analysis. The latter uh, enables um, us to, to find their upper uh, layers and sediment. Now their sediment structure their areas of Salme are pointed out here, Salme 1, Salme 2. We see three um, main layers of sediment. Their lowest is uh, uh, the Verde Day. Clay layers, they were formed some 12,000, 13,000 years ago in the Baltic uh, ice lake. And above them, there are two different uh, uh, sediments, uh, uh, they are sandy, gravelly coastal deposits. They are typical coastal deposits. And their lower complex uh, from vast clay till their green line, some four meters, these layers are slanted towards west and they have been formed in the marine environment. The lower sandy gravelly sediment unit, we have two data. Uh, their mollusk shell. Uh, this dating has been made in Uppsala, 3,400 BC. If um, you want to date their marine living beings, they are older than on their uh, mainland. And the second, this is quartz OCL H, and its uh, age is um, 3,320 plus minus. 370 BC. It's uh, 
considerably older sediment complex than around uh, Salme. And their upper level, upper sandy gravelly beach sediment unit, and out of them we have OSL ages, two of them, and the points are here, the red dot and Salme one ship towards east or cell two and the age of them uh, the first date uh, 60 plus minus apple minus 140 years anno domini and the other date 317 plus minus 100 years um, anno domini you see there variation of mistakes is rather wide, but uh, they are both uh, in the same cluster. It means their age is older than Salme 1 and Salme 2 ships buried there. And their archaeological age should be 750 years AD and their sandy gravelly coastal deposits uh, they should have been formed within these lines and dates next slide We also studied their sediments uh, in their strait. Where the strait is wider, it means the western part. Uh, in that part, we have sandy sediments. But uh, in this uh, narrower part, there is also silt, it means uh, the sediment uh, appeared step by step. And here in this slide, you see the cross section of uh, Salme Strait, their um, water level 750 AD. And here, the sediment complex. This area here, in the middle, these are, uh, this is silt, marine silt, formed in a calm situation. And here, the, in the western part, sandy is formed. Actually, it's very uh, it's a good area to uh, get their age data. In this column, it is um, the coring number two and drilling number two. We uh, used their seeds of uh, um, plants. to um, carry out the studies and 830 till 1000 years that was uh, the period this silt in that point was formed before that uh, the hydrodynamics was much higher and sandy sediment was formed. <laughs> Nowadays, uh, the area is quite muddy, but uh, in the ancient times, it was a nice sandy um, bank. Now, this um, silt and mud, we studied also the atom data, and here you see the diagram. As you see, 
DATAM data is very good material for solicited studies. And here we see that uh, the environment has been marine and uh, great change happened uh, to uh, 1,250 uh, uh, 1, AD. The situation in the street Uh, the situation was uh, replaced by floods. Uh, it means uh, there is, it, it, it's not quite fresh water. You can find salt there also. Now there are changes in the Sea level two processes are mainly influencing uh, it uh, in Sarem and also in Estonia. It's um, their raise rising of uh, Earth after the ice, ice age, and consequently, we have also the raise of uh, the earth level up lift two millimeters per year up to three millimeters per year in the northern part in north their glaciers were thicker and nowadays uh, near the Botnia area uh, their annual uplift is around 10 millimeters in comparison in Sarama it's around three millimeters and second process which is um, also of great influence it's uh, their um, change of ocean level 20,000 till 7,000 years ago, when the ice started to melt, uh, the, uh, the sea level was lower, then it started to ra rise, and now it is immediate. We can uh, judge it from uh, studying uh, different layers and sediment if we take the baltic sea area and the southern part of baltic sea where there is no practically no water level uplift here you see the data from the german coast during the last 3,000 years, their sea level has mm, risen some seven meters only, not considerable. Uh, the most important factor has been uh, the uplift of the earth. And now, if we take the sediment uh, near Salme and in the nearby region, uh, this is Asva also as a comparison, Salve itself and also Kuresare. Karel Puya has studied it um, in Kuresare. The blue line could mark the sea level change in Salme area. You see some 5.5 meters difference and near Salme the average 
level uh, water level is two meter to 30 above sea level and the stormy waves were higher of course but uh, if we compare the Apollo picture with their um, sea water data from the year 1900 till 2010 you see that uh, uh, great changes uh, have occurred if we go back in time then their earth uh, uplift uh, influence is seen and old coastal lines were higher 2.3 meters for example and some uh, height means two uh, and a bit more have been the heights of uh, Salma burial. It means these burial places were not quite on the coast. And the third topic uh, we studied, paleogeographical reconstructions. This is for the whole island of Sarema, uh, 700, 750 AD. The picture is very close to the present time coastline picture. Salme, Strain, and Strait, and their water level is slanting in comparison with their uh, modern levels. Uh, in the northern point, uh, some three meters is the difference. We have to consider that kind of difference um, while reconstructing. And the last slide, three moments in time near the Salma uh, Salme Strait, the last uh, 750 AD, it's uh, the Salme time, and you see uh, quite wide western part and relatively narrow eastern part and uh, Livonian Bay also seen, and the elevation uh, two meters higher where the boats are situated and up to 100 meters higher uh, from the coastline and the strait and the lower slide this is the period where strait had started to narrow and uh, 1,100, 1,300 AD, and some conclusions which I wrote here. Their late Holocene relative sea level curve shows the almost linear RSL fall. the parameters uh, of the strait, their depths of water, maximum uh, uh, 2.8 meters in uh, the narrow part, if we exclude the latest layers. 710 years before some uh, situation, there Sandy gravelly coastal de deposits were formed and accumulated, and their um, average water level uh, was 2 meters, 2.5 meters above the coeval sea level. And um, this is the end of my presentation.
I thank all my co-presentations, a long list of people who have participated. Helena Alexanderson uh, was the specialist of OSL, etc. Tid Hang and others. Many colleagues have helped us uh, in these reconstructions. Thank you very much.